those who wish to, we will now kneel for our moment of silence. Taking a page from Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's Empty Gesture Playbook, Congressional Democrats took a knee as they observed a nearly nine-minute moment of silence for George Floyd at Emancipation Hall at the U.S. Capitol. So, <laughs> taking a knee here, uh, this is what Justin Trudeau did yesterday, or I should say over the weekend, um, in terms of him joining a protest and kneeling while having nothing to announce. Uh, here, the Dem Democrats are doing the same thing, kneeling, also adding the the Kente cloth on top just for that, you know, that extra level for the Instagram. And um, at the same time, though, they actually did announce something. So not even give, like, this isn't to give the Democrats credit because what they announced is not nearly enough. But unlike Trudeau, who didn't announce anything, just went to a protest and kneeled essentially against himself as he's in a position of power to do something. Um, Democrats here kne uh, knelt and actually uh, did at least offer something. Now, that isn't to give them credit, because, again, it's not enough. But let me show you here what they did offer. From The Guardian here, Democrats unveil ambitious plan for police reform. This is a first step, quote from the Democratic Party. The legislation would ban chokeholds by police, set up a national database for tracking police misconduct, and would bar types of no-knock warrants. And in addition to that, as I've noted here... Um, they also, uh, Democrats also uh, will try to make it easier to pursue legal damages when police violate civil rights, and also limits the transfer of military hardware to police forces. Limits the transfer. I don't know why you don't just ban the transfer of military hardware to police forces. Again, this is supposed to be the opposition party, the Democratic Party. They're supposed to be re representing these movements in the streets. Yet, limiting the transfer of hardware is the best they can do. Now, again, none of this is anywhere close to enough. Uh, they should be discussing a push to defund the police. I know that that is more of an issue that is dealt with uh, on the local level. But you're seeing now with, uh, let me show you here, um, Minneapolis. Uh, the M Minneapolis City Council just announced their intent to disband the police department and replace it with a new community-led system that truly prioritizes the safety and health of community. Transformation, not reform. Now, I've uh, I've looked more into this. Apparently, it's going to be, I guess, a year process to really conduct the research that they want to conduct in terms of seeing how they're going to offset some of these responsibilities from the police department into these community-led um, systems. But this is, this is what should be happening. And this is what the Democratic Party should be doing to or should be pushing for across the country. So, look, again, what Democrats offered here or announced here is is nowhere nearly enough. Um, but it's it's the <laughs> it's doing this in combination with the performance uh, that I just don't understand how they think this works. Nancy Pelosi did something very similar last week, as Jordan all uh, tweets out here, where she... Um, held the Bible <laughs> here here at her office uh, a day after Donald Trump, you know, had his speech on the White House lawn, walked across the street to the church, and he held a Bible for whatever reason. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi did the same thing. Uh, like, I don't know who this works on. I mean, maybe back in the day when things were a little more, I don't know, I was going to say normal, but, but not even, <laughs> things haven't been normal for quite a while. But back in the day when the unrest wasn't so obvious, wasn't so out there in the streets, you could say, okay, maybe this will trick a few people. Now, again, I'm not thinking this is, I'm not excusing this move. Regardless of how you view this, this is performance. This is simply a way to trick people into thinking you're doing something. But in terms of the politics of it, in terms of being in Nancy Pelosi's head, maybe she, you know, back then, 10 years ago, you would think, okay, something like this might work. But when you were seeing this sort of anger, and unrest, and these are the, the moments <laughs> that you're giving people? I just don't... I mean, it, it really shows you, I think, how just completely tone-deaf you are, and how not up to the job you are in terms of being the opposition party and fighting for real systemic change. The Democratic Party clearly is not fighting for real systemic change, not in criminal justice, and not in healthcare, not in anything. It's always just 
tinkering around the edges, and it's never enough. And in fact, the uh, uh, Minneapolis went for, uh, attempted the serious police reforms, the Obama-era police reforms for years, and they didn't take. Or I should say, even if they took, they didn't work. They didn't actually transform the department. So they're seeing now the only way forward after trying everything is to defund the police, is to disband the police and move to a community-led system. This is what the Democratic Party should be fighting for. Now, which, which is a reminder, I have to say, to, um, you know, even if Trump loses it in November, which at this point seems likely, uh, I know polling can be off, of course, as it was off in 2016, but we're seeing massive leads right now for, for, for Joe Biden in, in national polling and in, in state polling. And that isn't because Joe Biden's a great candidate. He's not. It's because of what Donald Trump is doing and his inability to really respond to the events that are going on, whether it's the coronavirus, whether it's, it's, it's these protests. So if Joe Biden wins, this, these sorts of protests, not what Democrats are doing, but <laughs> the actual protests in the streets, they need to continue because you actually have the potential to push for real change if they are in power. Now, again, I'm under no, you know, I'm under no illusions, uh, no illusions that the Democratic Party are going to fight for anything real because they really have to be dragged, kicking and screaming to, end, to, to do anything that is worthwhile. But the point being, there is absolutely no communication, no avenue at all for anybody that is angry about uh, what is going on with the police. There's no avenue for any of those people when it comes to a Trump presidency. Under Democrats, if Democrats win in November, there's no more excuses. I mean, th think about how much more engaging and empowering this fight would be, these protests would be, if you can pressure the Democratic Party, if you can use that fight to actually pressure who, who the people in power are, as opposed to, you know, being out fighting and knowing that Donald Trump's not going to do anything. So there is still always that, again, it's never enough. It's never enough because it's politics. It's never going to be enough. Um, but the point being, think of when there have been small victories, like the civil rights movement in the 60s, or when it comes to gay rights under Obama. Those, yes, I know, both of those victories were not enough, and they didn't come quick enough. But again, they happened under Democrats. They did not happen under conservatives. So if there are going to be any any sorts of wins like that, they're going to come under Democrats. So this isn't an excuse. This isn't, you know, me propping up the Democratic Party, which I'm not sure if I do any positive videos on the Democratic Party, to be quite honest with you. Um, but it's just to say, look at who you're fighting. Would you rather your enemy be Donald Trump or would you rather your enemy be Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer? Because I, I prefer fighting Democratic leadership. So I think if you look at uh, if, if you look at it that way, you can see that there is um, at least more of a more of an engaged fight to have when it comes to Democrats. And seeing this be their their first step here, clearly it's nowhere near enough. But it shows you that the protests are at the very least forcing the Democratic Party to respond.